First up, let's talk about the surgical mask. Now over here, I've got an example of a surgical mask. As you can see, it is quite thin. And the original purpose of the surgical mask is for surgeons to use during surgery because it helps to keep out bugs from the surgeon's mouth and the nose going onto the patient during their sterile field during surgery. Of course, you don't want to create an infection. But it isn't able to keep out viruses because it is not tight fitting enough on the face. And I'll demonstrate to you how we place this on. So the surgical mask is placed around the nose and you press in with the metal so it's closely pressed by your cheekbones and then you place the elastic bands over the ears like so on both sides and finally bringing down this area to cover the chin but as you can see there is a lot of gap seepage of air from here and also down here as well and hence that is why it's not suitable for protection against viruses so that is your surgical mask and the way that you will remove it is obviously taking off from your ears folding it over, like so, and disposing it in the bin. Let's move on to the P2 or the N95 mask. Now you may have heard these two words being used interchangeably, but why are they being used interchangeably and what do they even mean? Well, the N95 and the P2 mask are very similar. They both block out at least 95% of small particles. The reason why one is called N95 because it has gone through USA testing and the P2 has gone through European standards. So for example, over here, I've got two N95 respirator masks. As you can see, this N95 respirator mask is much thicker than my surgical mask. And it's really important that if you are using an N95 or a P2 mask that you place on with a secure fit because if it's not placed on correctly, it's not going to offer you that protection that you are after. What's also important to note is that the N95 mask and the P2 mask come in different sizes. For example, this N95 respirator is a standard size and this N95 respirator is a small size. So this should only be used on children, whereas this one should be used on adults. Obviously, getting your size right is important because, well, let's face it, if you haven't got the correct size, you're not protected well. So let's go through how to place on an N95 respirator mask. As you can see in the middle here, there is a thick material and at the top there is a small, thin metal piece which you can mould and bend according to your nose shape, like so. So how does that work on yourself? Well, let's go through it. So first of all, you need to place the mask over your nose and you need to press in so you can get a nice tight pinch across your nose and then across your cheekbones as well. This will allow the metal to take the shape of your face and therefore give you a nice tight seal. Following this, you need to pull down the mask on the bottom and then you need to tie up the two sides around the back. And then you do the same for the bottom as well. Try to ensure that the top tie is above your ears and the bottom tie is below your ears. This will help to give you a nice tight fit. Once you've tied around the ribbons, press again on your face to ensure there's a tight seal. Once you're satisfied, you now need to perform a fit check and that includes taking a deep inhalation so if once you inhale deeply, you should be able to see that your mask is moved inwards because of that negative pressure. So let's take a look together. As you can see, my mask goes inwards, meaning that there is no seepage from around my mask. The next thing to perform is to perform an exhalation test. So place your hands across your mask and blow out as hard as you can and have a feel with your fingers to see if there's any loss of the air. As I can feel no loss of air when I exhale, I know that I've got a tight fit mask. Now you can imagine that talking with this for prolonged periods of time can be very, very tiring because the mask is so tight on the face, it does mean that you have to take deeper breaths and some people do get what we call mask fatigue. Now, as you can imagine, it does get quite hot and sweaty under here and you should seize using your mask once it's got moist or it's wet because it no longer becomes effective. It's also really important not to touch the outside of your mask with your fingers because that can also transmit the infection somewhere else. And of course, these are disposable masks, so they're not to be used or worn again or even washed again as I have seen on social media. You cannot wash your masks and reuse them again because they're no longer effective. And of course, for all of you fashionistas out there who might wanna put it around your neck in between patients or you know just put around the neck because it looks cool that is a complete no-no because of course you might be transmitting some of the virus around your neck to your mouth into your nose again and that's not going to give you any protection whatsoever once you finish with your mask untie it from the back take your mask off safely 
fold it in half and dispose of it in a closed bin. Make sure that you wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after you've used your mask. 